Hello friends, I'm Gia, and in this tutorial, we're going to be drawing this dreamy mushroom planet. As always, I will be drawing in the Procreate app on the iPad Pro, and as usual, my canvas size is set to 3000 pixels square at 300 dpi. If the layer limits on your iPad are too low at that size, you can set your canvas to 1500 pixels square at 300 dpi to get more layers. Let's turn on our drawing guides. Tap the Actions menu, then tap Canvas, then tap Drawing Guide. Hit Edit Drawing Guide, and you can make the grid size larger and change the grid color to whatever color you want. Then tap Done. Choose your favorite sketching brush. I'm going to be using the 6B pencil as usual. The first thing we're going to do is draw a loose circle. When you've completed your circle, keep your pencil down until you see where it says ellipse. Tap that and then tap circle to snap your shape into a perfect circle. Then tap the selection tool and you can adjust the size if you need to and go ahead and move that circle to the center of your canvas and you can use your guides to determine the vertical and horizontal center points. Now I want a little bit of space between the circle and the edge of the canvas, so I'm going to make that just a tiny bit smaller. And then tap the selection tool again to exit that mode. Now draw a curve towards the bottom of that circle, kind of like a little hill. And draw a vertical line somewhere near the center. Now you want that line to go maybe three quarters of the way up the circle. Now at the top of that line, draw a tilted oval. And then you're going to draw a dome shape at the top of that oval and make sure it connects to the oval on both sides. That's the cap of our first mushroom. Now using the vertical line as a guide, draw the stem of the mushroom and just make the lines slightly tilted so they flare out towards the bottom a little bit. Kind of like a tree trunk. And then you're going to add a few curved lines in that oval to uh, make the gills of the mushroom. Now we're going to draw a smaller mushroom to the left of that. So start with a curved line leaning to the left and then add a second line to make that stem. Just like before, we're going to add a tilted oval at the top of the stem and a dome shape above that. Now we're gonna have this one kind of sit behind the first mushroom, so have it overlap the cap of the first mushroom. And don't forget the gills. And then we'll add a third mushroom tilted in the other direction. So draw your stem. And this time we're gonna draw more of a bell shape for the mushroom cap. Now to play with scale, let's add a few simplified pinhead mushrooms at the base of these larger ones. So for those, it's just going to be a curved line and just a rounded shape at the top. You know, I want to make those various sizes and tilting in different directions. Now to soften the defined edges and break up the barrier of the circle, we're going to add a few leaves that will flow in and out of that shape. Now you can be pretty freeform with these. Draw your leaves in different shapes and sizes. And don't forget you want some of the leaves to fall inside the circle while others fall outside of that shape.
we're going to add a few clouds and stars. Now these will intersect and overlay uh, what we just drew. So we're going to sketch this part on a new layer so that the first part of our sketch won't be affected if we make changes along the way. So go to the layers panel and create a new layer. And for the clouds, we're just gonna draw a row of arcs in different sizes, starting with a large one and make a smaller one. And the third one will be even smaller. And like I mentioned, you want these to overlap the circle because that's gonna give us a nice layered look. Now to complete the cloud, just draw a straight line at the bottom of that row of arcs. Let's see, I'm gonna draw another one here. And I'll do a third one down at the bottom here. Maybe this one I can shift. And again, this is why we're doing this on a separate layer so that we can move things around without affecting what's below it. I think that'll work. Now for the stars, you can draw traditional star shapes or you can draw two lines that intersect, kind of like a cross, and add curved lines between them to make more like a sparkle shape. And we're just gonna have a few of these in different sizes both inside and outside of the circle. You can also add a few dots interspersed here and there. So all of the stars don't need to look exactly the same. Okay, once you're satisfied with the placement of everything, you can pinch those two sketch layers together, tap on the N, reduce the opacity. If your drawing guides are still on, you can turn those off now. Now let's start inking. This is the palette I'll be using, and I've added a link in the description where you can download these hex codes. We're going to get started with the background gradient. So create a new layer. And the brush I will be using is an extra large version of the monoline brush. I basically just took the monoline brush that comes with Procreate and made it really large. Um, and I shared how to do this with my Patreon members. But if you need another option, you can use the hard blend brush, which you can find in the airbrushing section of the brush library. You'll just need to apply a few strokes to get it nice and opaque because as you can see, it kind of feathers on the edges, but it'll do the trick. Now choose the mint color from the palette and fill the lower half of the canvas with that color. Switch to the lavender and fill the top half of the canvas. Now go to the smudge tool and select the soft brush, which you can also find in the airbrushing section of the brush library. And I have that set to about, let's make it about 40%. So it's pretty large. We're gonna use this to blend these two colors together to create a nice smooth gradient. Now when you're blending, you can push the colors around. Um, so if I want more of the mint, I can kind of push that color closer to the top, or I can kind of bring the lavender further down if I want that. So just play around until you get the blend that you want. When you're done blending, go ahead and drag that gradient layer below the sketch. With that gradient layer still selected, tap on the plus sign to create a new layer, and that new layer should also be below the sketch, but above the gradient. Switch over to the monoline brush, and in the palette, choose the dark green. Now go ahead and ink your circle using the same method that we used during the sketch. Tap ellipse, tap circle, now, it's likely that you're not gonna get it in the exact same spot as your sketch, 
So once you've tapped circle and these transform nodes are still um, highlighted, you can just drag the circle around to get it into the right position, or you can hold the edge of the circle with your pencil and uh, adjust the size as you need to. Tap anywhere on the screen to exit that mode, and then you're gonna just drag and drop your color swatch to fill that shape with color. Now go to that layer and turn on alpha lock. We're going to add a subtle gradient to this uh, shape as well. So go to your swatches and choose inky green. I'm gonna use the extra large monoline brush again. And just add that darker green to the lower half of that circle. Then go to the smudge tool, which should still have the soft brush selected. And you can reduce that size slightly and go ahead and blend those two greens. So you just want it to gradually get darker towards the bottom of the circle. Now tap on your sketch and create a new layer above it. Let's ink that big mushroom in the middle. And by the way, if you're having a hard time seeing your sketch now that we've added this really dark color, you can just go and uh, turn the opacity back up slightly so it's easier to see. I'm going to choose the dark leaf color from the palette and switch to the dry ink brush, which you'll find in the inking section of the brush library. Go ahead and ink that oval that's creating the underside of the mushroom cap. And we can use the same method that we use for making a circle. So keep your pencil down and when ellipse pops up, you can tap that and you can just adjust the shape and size to match your sketch. And go ahead and fill that with color. This time I'm filling manually so that I can preserve some of that texture from the dry ink brush. But if you're using a different brush, you can uh, drag the color swatch to autofill. Now create a new layer above that choose the blue green from the palette and we're going to ink the stem now we're inking above the sketch um, so i'm going to just reduce the opacity on that a little bit so that i can see the sketch below if you prefer you can drag your sketch to the top of the stack and ink below it totally up to you sometimes i prefer to ink above the sketch When you're inking the stem, you're going to want to make sure that your shape extends beyond the edges of that oval. Now create a new layer above that, choose the leaf color and we're gonna ink the dome, the mushroom cap on this layer. I'm gonna turn the opacity back up on that oval because I want this dome shape to line up really well. So we have the basic shapes, but it's quite flat. So let's add some shading and highlights. Go to the stem layer and turn on alpha lock. Choose the Pendani brush. This one is in the inking section of the brush library. And we're gonna still use the leaf color from the palette. Now just add a line of that darker color along the right side of the stem. Switch to the smudge tool, this time change it to the Pandani brush as well. And blend a little bit 
to create the shadow, but also a little bit of texture. You don't want a perfect blend like we did with the gradient. And if you need to, you can add a little bit more of the color and blend again. All right, now let's go back to that cap layer. Turn on alpha lock. And this time choose the blue green color and we're going to add that lighter color along the left side and the bottom edge of the cap. We're still using the pandani brush and again you're going to blend that with the smudge tool. Now we're going to tap on the oval layer. This time we're going to create a new layer above it and make that new layer a clipping mask. We're going to ink the gills on this layer. So you can go up to your recents in the brush library and switch back to the dry ink brush. And we're going to use the color citrus. And just let's ink those lines for the gills. If you need to, you can go ahead and drag your sketch layer back to the top of the stack to use it as a reference, or you can just freehand this part. Okay, that first mushroom is done, so we can select those four layers and group them. Now we're going to follow the same steps for the mushroom on the left. So create a new layer above that middle mushroom group choose the light plum color, ink the oval, adjust if you need to, then fill with color. Create a new layer, choose the plum color and ink the stem. Now I'm going to reduce the opacity on that oval layer again. create a new layer above that, choose the lavender color, and ink the cap. back to that stem layer, turn on alpha lock, choose the pandani brush and the light plum. And instead of shading, we're going to add a little bit of highlight along the left side of that stem. Select a smudge tool in the pandani brush and we're going to just blend that a little bit too. Now go to the oval layer, create a new layer above it, make that new layer a clipping mask, switch back to the dry ink brush, and we're going to ink those gills in the rose color. like we did before, we're going to select those layers and group them. And we actually want this uh, left mushroom to fall behind the big central one. So go ahead and drag that group below the middle mushroom group. 
Now that we have it in the right position, we can add a little shading to the cat. So go to the cat player, turn on alpha lock, choose the light plum color from the palette, switch back to the pandani brush, and just add that darker color along the right side of the cap, along the edge where the big mushroom overlaps it. Now don't add this darker color all the way down to the bottom edge of the cap because you need this lighter color to help separate the cap from the underside. So just stop your shading a little bit above that. Switch to the uh, smudge tool and blend. All right, on to the next one. Tap on the middle mushroom group and create a new layer above that. Choose the blue-green, switch back to the dry ink brush, and ink the stem. Now create a new layer, choose the light green, and ink the cat. Now turn on alpha lock on that layer, switch back to the pandani brush and choose the citrus color. We're gonna use that to add shading to the right side of the cap. And as usual, use the smudge tool to blend. Now go to the stem layer, turn on alpha lock, and for the shadow, we're gonna use the leaf color and just draw that line and blend. Now go ahead and select those two mushroom layers and group them. Now create a new layer, choose the orange, and switch back to the dry ink brush. Now let's ink the small pinhead mushrooms. These don't have much detail, so they'll be really quick and easy to ink. Now, as you can see, these mushrooms are all kind of just floating. So we're gonna ink that little mound to give them something to sit on. So you're gonna create a new layer, choose the dark leaf color. So you're gonna draw that little curved shape and make sure to extend it beyond the circle. Now you can increase the size of your brush and just fill that with color. Again, making sure to go beyond the circle. Now on that layer, reduce the opacity until the circle below is visible. Choose the eraser tool in the monoline brush. And you're gonna go in and erase everything that falls outside of that circle. Start out with the brush size fairly small so that you can get as close to the edge as possible. And then you can increase the brush size to erase the rest. Now you can turn the opacity back up on that layer. Now turn on alpha lock on that layer. Now we're just going to blend in a couple different colors just to make this look a little bit more interesting, not quite so flat. I'm gonna go with the blue-green 
I'm just going to add a little of that color on one side. And this is the Pandani brush, by the way. And I'll try the citrus color and add a, just a little on this side. And using the Pandani brush in the smudge tool, just blend those a little bit. Now, if you want a different effect, you are welcome to choose a different brush, different colors. The point here is just to give this little section a little bit more interest rather than leaving the color perfectly flat. All right, now for the leaves. Choose the citrus color and the dry ink brush. We're going to create a new layer and go ahead and ink all of those leaves. Remember, you can always move your sketch layer up in the stack if you need to see the sketch a little bit better. Once you've got your leaves all inked, you can go to that layer, create a new layer above it, then make that new layer a clipping mask. Choose the dark green, and we're gonna add a line down the center of each of these leaves. If you want to, you can go ahead and group those leaf layers as well. Now let's tackle the clouds. Create a new layer at the top of the stack. Choose the monoline brush and you're going to choose white. Now ink the outline of each cloud. You're going to want to make sure that all of your lines connect so that you're creating a closed shape so that you can drag and drop to fill. I'll go ahead and do the same for all the other clouds. Now, once all of your clouds are inked, go to that layer, tap the N, and reduce the opacity to about maybe about 60%. Let's see how that goes. I'm also going to temporarily turn off my sketch layer so that it's easier to see what we're doing. Go back up to the cloud layer and then tap on the eraser tool and set it to the soft brush. And we're going to erase the lower edge of each cloud so that the shapes don't feel so heavy. Now, when you start erasing along the bottom edge, you're gonna want to reduce the brush size so that you can really get in there and eliminate that hard edge first. Then increase the size so that when you erase, you're getting a nice feathered edge so that it just, the cloud just kind of disappears. Again, start with the brush at a smaller size to completely erase that hard edge. Then increase the size and just feather out. And as you're doing this, you know, you'll just have to play with the brush size a little bit to get the effect that you want. Now that things are inked, you can kind of move your clouds around on this layer to get them exactly where you want them. 
All right, I'm going to turn my sketch layer back on, create a new layer at the top of the stack. I should still be using the monoline brush, but I'm going to reduce the size a little bit so that we can ink the stars. Now with the stars, you can ink them individually or you can ink one star, then duplicate that layer by swiping left, tap duplicate. Then you can tap the selection tool and move that duplicate wherever you want it. If you use the duplicating method, just be sure to pinch all of those star layers together so that they are all on the same layer. Now you can increase the size of the monoline brush slightly and go ahead and ink all those little dots. All right, so go ahead and turn your sketch layer off and we're all done. There's our dreamy mushroom planet. If you decide to try this tutorial and share it on Instagram, be sure to tag me at I am Geogram so I can see your art and feature it. And if you'd like access to more content, you can join my Patreon community where I share bonus videos, wallpaper downloads, color palettes, and drawing inspiration every month. I'd love to see you over there. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, I'd love it if you'd give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.